Prior to the pandemic, our weekly roundtable was a regular and popular part of this program. Spontaneous, unscripted discussion of the week's top news stories. And we're bringing it back today <laughs> in the new normal virtual way with our two roundtable veterans. Raquel Rocky Rodriguez is former general counsel to Governor Jeb Bush. Now managing partner at Buchanan, Ingersoll and Rooney and recently tapped to chair the law firm's Florida offices. Chris Smith is an attorney in Fort Lauderdale with the Trip Scott firm. He's a former Democratic state senator and representative and is so great to have you both here with us sure today. Sure is. Chris Ronke, great to see you. Chris Smith, let great me begin. Be Thank you. Uh, Chris, let me great ask you, uh, this week, Tuesday, I guess, in Jupiter, President uh, Trump was there, called himself the environmental president, greatest environmental president since Teddy Roosevelt, which might be a bit of a stretch, but he, but he, but he did sign this executive order for a decade of guaranteeing no offshore oil drilling on either Florida coast. And there are a lot of people who really uh, appreciate that and want that. What difference uh, is this going to make in the election? Well, I think people are going to see through it, that he's had four years to actually do legislation to change this. And he's had four years to sign, as um, Congresswoman Shalala said, real action by doing an executive order shows that, you know, December 1, he can rescind that executive order. It's clearly seen as a political stunt and the last minute to try and get some of those environmental water voters. His administration, his Department of Interior, has talked for three and a half years about allowing more drilling for gas and drilling for oil. And now that he's looking at the polls, he's seeing that maybe I need a reverse course, but by doing an executive order, it's not permanent. He can change it, and we've seen this president change his mind on a drop of a dime. So, Rocky, actually, when the administration was looking to expand drilling, then Governor Rick Scott convinced the, the president to take Florida out of that mix. So, so what's wrong with an elected official doing what its constituents want? There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, Glenna. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, presidents and others have the prerogative to change their mind. This president maybe changes his mind more often and more quickly than others. But I want to clear up uh, two misconceptions. Number one, we have had a ban on drilling in the uh, Florida uh, area of the Gulf of Mexico since 2006 with legislation that President George W. Bush signed. Now, that legislative ban is going to expire in 2022. In addition, uh, the, the president's executive order, people commonly think that it can be rescinded on the drop of the dime, but there was recently a federal decision that held that President Trump could not rescind President Obama's prior executive orders on other kinds of environmental issues without going through a very thorough administrative process. So it is not as easy to rescind executive orders in this area as people are saying. Yeah, and it would pro probably be political folly to turn right around and, and rescind it. Let's move on, if we can, to the uh, 11th court, uh, Circuit Court of Appeal in Atlanta yeah. this week uh, issued a really significant ruling overturning the trial court judge on Amendment 4, the right of ex-felons to vote Chris Smith. Uh, this is a huge disappointment <clears throat> for about 800,000 former felons yes. who had been counting on voting in November. Now they won't be able to. Yeah, this is something I worked on in the legislature and I talked to you guys as a member of the Constitutional Revision Commission. Something I thought Florida took a significant step on allowing these almost million voters who have served their time, who have done what's necessary to vote. And for the 11th Circuit to go back and you know, sort of ratify what we called a poll tax um, for people to be able to vote. It was disheartening. It's going to be significant in the Florida election by by um, voting out those voters. I think, you know, raisers in a state like Florida, those voters will be significant. And it was disheartening that the voice of Florida, those over 60 percent of Floridians that voted to allow those people to vote for the 11th Circuit to do that. It's real disheartening, and we hope, and then I know there's appeals, I hope we can do something in the future to allow the voice of Floridians to let those people vote, vote. You know, we always, we've been talking about this, to your point, so much, and we always yes. manage to talk about it in sort of a partisan sense. 
but we've met so many former felons who are Republican <coughs> voters. Why, why is there this sense that the people who now are blocked because of financial issues from regaining these voting rights are would be overwhelmingly Democrat? Rocky? I don't or Chris, well, uh, jump in, just, round table, you, you get to jump pointed, in. <laughs> you just pointed out something that's very important. You know, the, the Florida legislature was not picking one side or the other. It wasn't race-based, it wasn't partisan-based. It was implementing what the voters actually voted for. What did Amendment 4 say? You had to complete all terms of your sentence forever. Terms of sentence have included fines, penalties, and restitution. There was never... This is not a poll tax, this is a penalty. And what the, the 11th Circuit did, it wasn't just consistent with what the voters voted in 2018, it was, it's consistent with the U.S. Constitution. They, they uh, were supposed to defer to the judgment of the legislature. There's a rational reason for requiring people to pay the restitution and the fines that are part of their sentence. This is part of the reentry into society after you have broken the social compact. Over 30 other states have conditions for uh, fel people who are convicted of felons to be able to vote. Florida is no different. I, I don't really think it's, uh, and it, this is, you know, we've banned felons completely since before Florida became uh, a state, since before the Civil War. And so yeah. this is a longtime policy of the state. And to say you have to have all or nothing and you can't have a midway point where people are uh, required to re-enter society by complying with its rules, I don't think is unconstitutional. And I think the 11th Bro. Circuit got it exactly right. Can, can I just point out, Bro. Chris, there is, yeah. in Miami-Dade County, and we've had the state attorney and the public defender on this program, they've created yeah. this sort of rocket docket where they actually yeah. go and help those people get a plan for payment that then right. allows that it's a really interesting role yeah. model program has that been picked others. up anywhere else well you've had others like lebron james and other athletes who have now stepped forward financial services to help help these people um and, and yeah this was before civil war there was a lot of stuff before civil war that we actually changed well, because but that's, the right you know, thing love lebron but he this can't the change right the law Right. LeBron James no, no, can't do no, what the state attorney people, does. <laughs> to help the people if, if I could jump in though. here, you know, um, there is uh, the, the uh, Desmond Meads Group, uh, the Florida mm. uh, Rights Restoration Coalition, does have a program to help people uh, find out what their fines are. And there's uh, lawyers working pro bono on this. I'm very proud to say that my firm, uh, Buchanan, Ingersoll, and Rooney, is part of this coalition that is helping people find out what their fines are and um, and and help them comply so that they can actually register to vote. So I applaud LeBron James for for using his wealth and his efforts. I think that it's perfectly uh, wonderful. And in fact, I think as part of uh, civil society, we should be helping others comply with the requirements to vote. But right. you know, the law is the law, and we yeah. have to comply with it. But now it's up yeah. to us as citizens to help people comply with it so they can register. All right, well, we're going to talk about yeah. one other <laughs> aspect of the law, which was yes. Renatha Francis is not going to be a member yes. of the Florida Supreme Court. We'll talk more uh, with the roundtable about that when we come back. Welcome back. We are in the midst of a very good roundtable with Rocky Rodriguez and Chris Smith, friends of the roundtable for a long time. Uh, Rocky Rodriguez, let me ask you about this situation with Circuit Judge Renatha Francis. She had been nominated by the governor to be a Supreme Court justice, uh, but the state Supreme Court late this week sent the governor an order saying she is not qualified, name somebody else because she has not been a member of the Florida Bar for 10 years and would not be until September 24th. You, you, know, you would think that the governor's counsel would have done a better job of vetting her before he named her. I don't think it's a question of vetting. I, and I think it was very well known that she had not yet reached 10 years in practice. I think it was a, a difference in analyzing when is it that the uh, a justice uh, to actually takes office and when does that qualification apply? In of elections, a, a judge elected 
has to be eligible as, as the date of the election. So I think that probably the legal analysis that the governor's office was engaged in and the Florida Supreme Court had a different take on it. Rocky, could, your, your signal is breaking up a little bit. The uh, announced the appointment. Let's, let's try to get your I'll signal in locked she, in a little bit. Up. Chris Smith, uh, <laughs> go ahead and jump in here. I'd because gladly jump in. Here's the problem with what happened this week. Um, as a African-American male, one of the things I've experienced throughout my life is the, the stereotyping of affirmative action hires. And what the governor was doing was making a character, caricature and making um, the stereotype of affirmative action hire, that we needed diversity on the court. I fought for that for many years. People like Perry Thurston, Bobby DuBose, Keone McGee fought for diversity on the court. And what the governor was doing was creating diversity on the court, but with someone who wasn't technically qualified. I know Judge Francis, she's a great jurist, she's a great lawyer, but under the rules of the court, she was not qualified. So for him to appoint her when she's not qualified is buying into the caricature or the stereotypes of an affirmative action hire. There are many great African-American jurors throughout this state that he could have chosen from or to try to get through the JQC. And it was just an unfortunate situation where the governor tried to do a good thing and tried to do the right thing, but it's ironic that he was buying into and playing into what we've experienced for years, and that's the stereotype or the caricature of an affirmative action hire. Chris, should we I, not be should we not I, be looking at the actual judicial nominating commission? Who yeah. he's yes, he needs to definitely. pick from that list, yes. and that list was not diverse at yeah. all. I gotta Correct. I gotta jump in Correct. here. I I don't think the governor was motivated by any caricature. Uh, uh, judge Francis is is well known as a very thoughtful judge. She's had a stellar career. Yes, um, she's, she had mm -hmm. been in practice less, less than 10 years, but um, t that aside, she ticked every box for having the call. And I said that. I, I, agree. I agree 100%. I, don't want to, I do not want to disparage Judge Francis. I think she's a great choice for the Supreme Court. But what we've experienced for decades is that an affirmative action hire is not qualified. They do not meet the qualifications. And under the Supreme Court, and under our Constitution, and under our rules, she did not meet the qualifications and what he would have done is contribute to that caricature right. i know he did not want chris, to do that chris he wanted Rocky, to do the right we, thing th this this discussion is not over I'm we sure. just didn't leave enough time <laughs> our but, fault but, our bad but we are out of time thank you very much for a really great discussion great to see you both great. thanks thank for having you. me on this week